Jazz or Bane actually grew out of a collaborative discussion with bassist Esperanza Spaulding. We agreed it would be great to play a regular club date. We had one rehearsal, but I ended up starting a band from it with fellow musicians Kenwood Denard, George Russell Jr., Lenny Starworth, and Stan Strickland. And we began a weekly performance series. And then Esperanza and a string of artists including Christian Scott, Alex Hand, Terry Lynn Carrington, Ralph Peterson, and later Grace Kelly and others joined as guests. We began that in 206. Soon, that regular Monday session was listed in the New York Times as a hot top spot jazz night to be at. It morphed into three other Boston local club music series over the years where the initial idea was still in place. Generational creative music with a funky, stylish, urbane sophistication. The idea for me was that neo soul and contemporary jazz may have skipped over the core jazz fan base. R&B forms, lyrical sentiment, and breadth of those forms. There needed to be a linkage and a generational sharing of ideas. Bridges between jazz, great songs, and contemporary feels. And so the music grew out of the spirit of these kinds of linkages. Partnerships, creative musicians bringing music to music first and then to the folks. So I recorded some ideas, my songs, some older ones, and asked a younger producer partner, Ron Dorsey, to infuse it with studio contemporary vibe and then vocal master Joey Blake to not only find the right vocal artist, but to produce vocal environments on the records. Next, we started gigging the record live. The people kept coming, and that's what we do. That's the jazz or bane in full swing. Because, you know, when you do this kind of thing, you got to sign interviews, right? I autograph. What's your name? Oh, my goodness. The Jazz Urbane does their thing. He's taking a video. He's taking a video. I cannot believe it. <laughs>